Uh, he banged his head at the last play. Um, he fell on the floor and banged his head, so uh, uh, I haven't seen him yet, whether he's hurt or not. But he was, uh, he should be fine tomorrow, but he was, he was outstanding yesterday. It was good to see him back to, instead of avoiding everything, creating and doing the stuff that we've all seen him do. You go down that road and you start thinking the wrong way. It's, this, this game is more mental than anything else. And for him, uh, he got away from what he was doing to make himself and set himself apart. So he'll be fine. Talking Jared. about Jared, and did you ever have your high school number retired? Um, no, they were happy I left. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, I'm, I'm, you know, for him, and the team was great when I told him yesterday we're all going to go and be there for him, and he, they went crazy for him. Um, and what a great gesture uh, for their high school to do. Uh, obviously, we can't stay for the game. and I'm not allowed to speak. We can't do anything because there's all kind of rules to what we can and can't do. But we are going to go, and while that's there, the team will be there, and we'll, then we'll come back. Jared said Willie had a look yesterday in practice yeah. that he hadn't seen in a while. What, yeah. what, what does that look like, and where, where did it go? When you're coaching, there's a look of keep telling me, and then there's a smirk. And what I said, the smirking ain't working. <laughs> <laughs> you, need to, you need to understand why we tell you to do certain things. And, you know, the... This all, you know, I had talked about John Hood probably three or four days before. Um, you know, it's amazing how much he's grown. I mean, amazing. It's like we have another coach in him. Um, I told the team about John. I said, hey, if you want to know how good you are compared to who he's played against, there is no player in the country that has played with more pros than John Hood. There isn't one. There's not one. Maybe never will be one. He's gone from what about me and how I, to how do I help this team and what I do, and all of a sudden he's having a ball making it about everybody else. And if he gets his opportunity, John Hood will be ready. Um, we talked about Alex. And, and Alex now, in my mind, if, when he's 35 years old and something hits him, he's not going to blame anybody. He's not going to listen to the alibis. He'll work on changing, and his, quote, failure won't be for long. That's what you hope you get from all this stuff, that you're teaching life lessons, that they use this. Willie, when you have it going good, you better keep riding the stuff that you're doing well. If you embrace the wrong stuff, you start sliding the other way, and it's a hard slide. I mean, he, you know... He's done well yesterday, and I hope he goes in the game, but it's like a diet. You do right for five days doesn't mean you're going to lose 72 pounds, maybe even gain weight, but you're doing the right stuff so you stay with it and you know it's going to work and you keep marching. That's what I'm trying to tell all these kids. Derek Willis, talked about him yesterday. Derek, when he gets his opportunity, he's going to do fine. He's our best post passer. Um, they play zone, I'm going to start putting him in. We may be, may, be able, may be able to play zone with him because now you're really big because he would be our three. I'm talking 6'10", six, 6'10". Six, I mean, it's a huge zone if we want to play that way. So, you know, there's things that we're talking about that go beyond just the basketball. But, you know, again, the clutter they hear, 100-man marching band, and that band is step by step. 99 turn right. This guy turns left. And his people, that clutter says to him, what's wrong with those other 99? That's the clutter. And you've got to get beyond all that. I'm, take, I'm owning what's happening. I'm taking responsibility. He was in the gym the night before. It's 11 o'clock at night. He knew. We didn't have a practice. He came in anyway. So doesn't mean it's the next game. But he'll change. He'll get it going. We've talked a lot about the clutter of people. people it's everywhere. It's not just here. I know what's happening across the country. <clears throat> everywhere. 
you can become delusional. And I've had guys do that. Like you're listening and buying it, and it's making you feel good, and you become delusional. Or you can man up a little bit, own your own performance, listen to it, but understand this person's not helping me. Then you want that call less and less instead of more and more. Tell me what I want to hear. It makes me feel good because I don't want to take responsibility. Then you, that's who you talk to all the time. Become delusional. Let me just say this. What I'm saying, I've done this a long time. Every team I've coached has the clutter. Now who's going to deal with it and who's not? My good teams don't buy it. Sometimes the clutter is they're on each other's, the other players. You know, turning, you try to, he shouldn't be shooting all the balls, you're better than, you know, that stuff. It doesn't just happen here. It's everywhere. Now, is that a major problem? It might have been, I don't know, but I know this, it's out there now. If it was, I think it's been addressed. John, what was your reaction to Brian Shorter and all that? They're still looking at all those things, so.